The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Hi, thanks for tuning in to Let's Talk Beauty. I'm Sharon, your host, and my co-host for this month is Shapice from Pampered Chef. Um, what's going on today? Busy, busy, busy? <laughs> the same old, same old, I yes. I know, that's what we always talk about. <laughs> Before we went on air, we're how crazy our life is and how busy we are. And just well, getting ready is, for the fall season. This is our really busy time of the year. Yep. People are booking parties to get ready for the holidays, and yep. I love it. <laughs> I know, which we mentioned last week, which I need to do for November, so we definitely have to lock that in soon. Yes. Um, I like the idea of doing a brunch uh, party. Uh, brunch parties are really nice. It's yep. early in the morning. I usually run them from about 11 to 1, okay. and people get a chance to still have their day to themselves. You know, you've got some chicken and waffles. We've got a really great chicken and waffles Ooh. recipe. And it's not chicken and waffles like you would think. Okay. And, you know, a mimosa mm -hmm. or Bloody Mary or something really light. And it's just very refreshing. It's a nice time. Yeah, oh, that's exciting. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Holidays are around the corner. It's crazy. Ah, before you know it, it'll be here. I'm already booking my clients and I'm like, oh, no, this isn't happening, right? <laughs> Speaking of booking your clients, your hair looks fantastic. Thank you. I love Thank that you. color. New red. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Love Very it. nice. So I'm going to, I mentioned before we um, started that I'll be doing the hair extensions for my fitness show. So it's going to be very, you know, vibrant and long and fun. Oh, I so can't another wait. one of the fun things that we do with the salon, you know. <laughs> nice, I nice, know. nice. Excited. It's going to look good Thank on you. Thank you. You're looking fabulous. Thank Still you. Still looking good, girl. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's hard work. <laughs> so we're going to introduce our guest today, Lisa Law. Um, there's a a few different things um, in your background. So thanks for coming on the show. Oh, thanks for having me. So Great. tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I, I... What is it you do? What do I do? <laughs> um, I'm a, mainly a feng shui practitioner. I like going into people's homes and um, helping their spaces function better and um, just helping them think about where their life is right now and how to have their environment support what it is they're working on. And um, from that jumping off point of feng shui, I became really interested in meditation and um, I now teach yoga to cancer patients and it's all... Once you start working on creating a positive environment out here, you start thinking about creating a positive environment in here too. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're doing that with your fitness. And, right. And uh, so it's all, they're all connected. Mm -hmm. um, so when everything is functioning well and feels really good out here, it brings about that feeling of inner peace. And, and um, meditation and yoga, I find, really support a positive lifestyle too. And what a fancy word. Mm. Feng shui. I love <laughs> feng shui. I'm like, like, what is that? Ah, uh, <laughs> I, I had a book uh, many years ago on it and was stuck. And every room in my house mm -hmm. has to be this way, has to be that way. I dropped my daughter off at college. She had her bed in one way. I was like, we cannot put it that way. Oh, that's good. You we know, have that's oh, good. Yes. The power position. Around. That's right. <laughs> so in, we like to have our desk and our bed and our couch, if we can, facing the doorways because um, it makes you feel more comfortable. So if you think about someone coming up behind you and you're always right. worried about who's coming behind you, if you're facing that door, you, it takes away that stress. Oh, that's actually so, a really good point. Yeah. So if you can put your bed in a place where you can see the doors, we prefer that. And if you can't with the furniture, you can put something that reflects the doorway across from it so you can see people coming in. Oh. Like a lot of people are in cubicles in their office mm -hmm. and they'll have a room of people this way or a big hallway and just getting a little bike mirror and putting it on their computer monitor or having a little makeup mirror on their mm -hmm. desk so they can see who's coming helps them relax. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And so there are lots of fun little things like that. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. How long have you been doing this? Um, I became certified about five years ago. Um, I've been practicing feng shui for about 20 years of my life and I took an interior design class and the teacher introduced us to it and I started working with it and dabbling with it and then I got busy raising kids. I was selling real estate and then um, my mom passed away in 2007 and I was going back and forth to Florida taking care of my grandmother and I felt like my whole world kind of went out of balance mm -hmm. and there was like this bickering between my husband and me that, I, that we'd never had before but it was all the stress and 
So I pulled out my favorite feng shui book and I started making these changes and I did some things in our, there are nine different areas of your life that get mapped onto your environment. One of them is your love and marriage area. And so I went around to all of our love and marriage areas in our home and put pictures of us happy together in all those places. And the bickering stopped overnight. It was like, wow. Wow. And so I started working deeper and deeper and deeper with it. And I felt I had an anxiety problem. I had back trouble. And all these things that were feeling out of line in my life came back into line. And it took a few years, but the practice of the feng shui over a long period of time and then thinking about where my life was, what was working in my home, what was not working in my home, and really setting it up so that it fit where my goals were. Mm -hmm. um, now our home is like, you know, we're all stressed and working and out in the world. And now when we come home every day, our house is like this peaceful place where we go and we recharge ourselves. Right. And so it's, it's, um, it's funny, there's a whole energy aspect to it too. Um, this life force energy or chi, um, you think about your breath and the breath comes all through your body, this energy comes all through your body. And so we're interacting with everything around us all the time. And so when that energy is positive, it builds us up in a positive way too. Right. And so, that so you got good. inspired through going to school through for interior design? Yep. You got introduced to it I then? Took, you yep, just I took classes in interior design. And then um, when I, I felt like I got to this place in my life that I'd never been to before. And I was really happy and, and I loved the feng shui in my own life. And so I really wanted to share it with other people. And so I went out to California um, and, and did a whole training. It took about six months to become certified. So you went to California yeah. for six months? No, I went for a week. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I, I went want that home. job. <laughs> I <didn't> do that. <laughs> I, it would be fun to do that. Right. Um, <laughs> California is a great place. But I went out there for a week and then we did a um, a series of different projects to, in order to get cer certified. Okay. And so um, it's a Western style of feng shui. Feng shui started um, in the East and it's part of Chinese culture and it's been around for thousands and thousands of years and the school I went to grew out of all that tradition um, but it also brings in um, our ideals of personal empowerment and thinking about how to support yourself on your life journey and so it's a nice mix of of the two kinds of philosophies. So how long have you been doing the yoga with cancer um, patients? Let's, I've been teaching that for about six, six months. Okay. Um, and they're a really great group. They um, teach, it's an, um, I do it as a volunteer um, for this program called Yoga Caps and it's all volunteers like me um, who get certified and um, there are people that teach in senior centers, there are people like me who teach cancer patients and anyone who's taking care of a cancer patient too, and it can be anyone who's had cancer at any point in their life. They're eligible to come to the class, and um, they teach at the VA hospital with people who are in wheelchairs, and mm -hmm. um, they're just trying to serve, bring yoga, and it's all done in a chair. And it's very, um, it's just moving one part of your body at a time, and even if you can't do it, you can think about it, and you still get the benefits of the yoga. So you so got it's to really get certified. Pretty neat. You got yeah, certified yeah, I got certified. Yep. So how did you get, are you a traditional yoga instructor or is this a different I'm, kind of I'm certification? A third, I'm a certified therapeutic yoga instructor and it's done in the chair. My certification is to teach in the chair. And then there's also a, a deep relaxation and um, what we call yoga nidra part of it where it's um, these breathing techniques and, and centering techniques and being aware of your body. And, and you, you guys have heard about mindfulness. Mm -hmm. um, the yoga... Have you guys done yoga? Yeah, yeah. I have. So yoga, as you know, you become aware of your body in, in this awareness, this mindfulness, and you're like, oh my god, I don't need to hold my leg that tight. Or I, my mind is busy, and I'm aware of my mind being busy. And then you focus on your breath, and then that, that, all that thinking goes away. So the mindfulness in the yoga is of your body and of your breath. And then I love the idea of mindfulness for your home. And that's really what the feng shui is. And so I, I really think of all these different practices as mindfulness of in different aspects. So this is your full-time career? This is what you've yep, been doing, I'm doing for? It. Yeah, I have um, a, a couple different kinds of clients. I have people who are really interested in the feng shui and the energy part. And then I have people um, who just want some de design advice and they want to be able to see their 
home from a different perspective. And then a big part of feng shui is decluttering. <laughs> and so I, about a third of my clientele are people that need help just rethinking their spaces and need some support in getting rid of some things. And so um, there are people I go to their home um, regularly and we do some decluttering sessions and help them get more organized. And I love that too. I love all the different parts of it. Well, yeah, that's so great because you have a person, you know, variety of you know different things that you can offer. So it kind of like mixes up your day a little bit. Every day is different. Yeah. And what everyone's looking for in their life is different. And their home is sort of like a puzzle. How do you make it fit for them better and work for them better? And I love that. I love the mm -hmm. creative part. And I love working with people and drawing out their creativity because it's really your home is your expression of who you are and and what you're doing and. And um, when people start thinking about it that way, it's fun to draw that part out. Yeah, It's really nice because I always try to create an environment in my home. People have always walked into any place I've had and said, I feel like I'm home. Like it feels so warm and cozy and like you can just go to sleep. And that's the environment that I try to create. And simple things like moving your furniture and not blocking the energy from coming in. Yep. And it's little things that you wouldn't think. And I would say, you know, just put that over there. Move that over here. And, yeah, so you're wow. really sensitive to it. Oh, very yeah. much so. I was that's very good. excited when I heard that you were oh, coming. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I, in my house, it's, it's really difficult to change furniture around because, the, well, you'll see when you come to my house, the way my house is set up, it's just, it's kind of like a maze. It's like a step up, step up, step down, step up. You know, it's just very <laughs> different kind of open concept. Um, but what I like to do is I love the seasons because then I'll like I'll change plants out, yep. I'll change decorations out, I'll change curtains out because it's the only thing that I really can change mm -hmm. is my decorations. So <laughs> it's like, oh, you know, mom's changed things around again. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, it, even with the salon and stuff like that, I love I love to like change things up. I hate just look looking at the same things all the time. Right. You know, season to season, it's kind of a nice switch up. I don't change much in my house. It is no. What it is. There can do, be little things you can do, like instead of a square coffee table, having something that has rounded edges. And yeah. so that helps the energy flow a mm -hmm. little bit more smoothly in little places. So there are little things you can do yeah. um, that aren't expensive. And that's what I like about it. There's no perfect home. There's no perfect house. There's no perfect space. And it's all just shifting things around a little bit just to make it feel better. Yeah. And that's really what it is. We're trying to create like this peaceful place to go home to mm -hmm. every day. It's funny when you talked about the, the kitchen in different places. I had my first apartment, it's like a galley kitchen. And I did not like being in there because I never could see who was coming behind me. That's when I had the book. And I just put a mirror right where my stove was and I could see any, and it totally changed mm -hmm. how I felt being in the kitchen, just that one step. Mm -hmm. They've done studies on people who are in cubicles with their back to the to the door or back to the room and um, when they shift them so they can see the room, the productivity goes up 30%. I totally believe yeah. that because I worked where we all had cubicles and I always made certain I could see who was coming and never wanted anyone behind and you're blocked in enough just being in the cubicle. I always try be and careful. be the first one in a restaurant to get to the table so that I can see the doors. Right, the, yes. And I did that even before <laughs> feng shui. Really? It's that if you think about us in our in our instincts, you know, we used to have to know who was coming so we could protect ourselves right. or run away. And so it's those old fight or flight instincts that a lot of feng shui, it's, most of it's really common sense. And then it's just having this positive flow of energy. Hmm. So you did a book. I did. And um, I've done some traveling around the meditation. I've been um, to a series of meditation retreats and there's a gentleman that comes here every year from Singapore, and he, he goes to 14 different countries and does, it's a spiritual awakening program. Mm -hmm. And then once you've done the week in your country, you're el eligible to travel with a group, and the first one's in Nepal. And so I went on this program with people from all over the world to Nepal, and then I did spend five weeks in Asia. Wow. Um, wow. I went to India and Bali and Thailand, and, and I taught um, feng shui in Singapore at this gentleman's center. And, did consultations in people's homes, which was really, really fun. Well, that could be a whole nother show. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. really cool. <laughs> All of the travel was spectacular. and But it's meeting people who are interested in the same things I was from all over the world. Um, I realized that really what everyone's, we're all looking for the same things. We're all looking for that inner peace. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my journey was to find that inner peace that I didn't have before. 
and then sharing it with people. And so we're all trying to be more positive. We're all trying to do all these different things. And so I wanted to simplify feng shui and combine the spiritual side of it. You know, people say, oh, just live in the moment. But that's a whole process that can take years and years and years. <laughs> and so I, I came up with these cards, um, and they all have positive messages on them. And some of them are pictures Sorry. from my travel. Mm -hmm. Oh. So they'll have, they have pictures, um, then they have a positive message, and then they have just a little bit of feng shui, what to do if you want to be more positive. How do you do that in your environment? Or you want to promote better health, or you um, want more balance and tranquility, or that feeling of inner peace. So how do you arrange your environment to support that aspect of your life? So the book is... And the book explains feng shui in really simple terms. Um, there's a little section on decluttering. I find that most of us need that. <laughs> I know I do. And then each, each section, each card, has a uh, more in in, in depth okay. how, to, how to incorporate that. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, so it's, a, it's an it easy do? feng shui read. How it only it takes take an hour and a half to read it, but it took me two years to finish it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. It's hard to do something. It's hard to sit down one day and say, you know what, I'm going to write a book today. Yeah. There's a whole process around that. I, oh, trust me, I would so, love to write a book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it takes a lot of discipline. Yeah, I found, is. um, I wrote, I wrote a version and then, um, I, I did work with a lady over in Peterborough who helps, um, people who are writing their first book, she helps edit and she'll give feedback. And so she read it and we got it to a certain place and then I'm like, you know, there's something off and I just started over and, and kind of rewrote the whole thing in a summer. So it, it was a whole process and I felt like I was still learning a lot mm -hmm. on my spiritual journey that I wanted to keep incorporating into the book. So, so where can you get this book? Um, you can buy it at Mother and Child Store. You can get it at Collins Flowers. Oh, okay. um, Sconces has them. Oh. Um, Birch has them and the Toadstools have them. Oh, okay. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, it's been fun. It's been nice to have the support of the community. It's mm -hmm. been a really really neat journey because it, it was a little, people are like, fun what? <laughs> and so I started writing a newsletter just for my friends and my family so they didn't think um, I need an intervention and they needed to pull me back <laughs> so they'd understand that this is all really okay. Yeah. And then when I went to Nepal, everyone was like, what? Yep. And so it's all been a, it's been a neat process of sharing my journey with everybody and, and having them get excited about it too. And then it's been wonderful to have the community support right. too. And that's great, and that's a good point to say. Well, your family and your friends are like, well, what is she? She lost it or something? Like, where does she go? Is she, she's so involved in this. And that's how I feel about me doing my fitness challenge is, mm -hmm. like, you know, people like my friends and family, you know, respect the fact, you know, and it, people are messaging me and the fact that, wow, you look great. Like, what are you doing? You know, how are you doing that? And you it's become really, an inspiration for them. Exactly. It's yeah. been very inspiring for me and for other people. And it's been, you know, a huge dedication. Um, but that's the same way. When, you get, when you're passionate about something in life, that's the yeah. whatever it may be, yep. you're going to strive. You're going to run high with it. You're going to work hard on it. And people are going to be like, whoa. Well, and there's a different, when you're following your passion and you're living from the heart, People respond to that. They mm -hmm. understand it. They see it. You know, it. they see it. They feel it. They want to understand it so they can have that, too. Yeah. And I've, you know, in the last few years since I've been in downtown Nashville, I've met a lot of amazing women that are business owners, which has been thinking to myself during, you know, our conversation is that I would love to have an event at the salon with just entrepreneurs. Oh. Just get everybody kind of like at a round table and you know, networking with each other mm -hmm. and just having conversation and meeting each other. And yeah, that'd be fun. I think that would be a really, really great thing to do. It's, it's so much so you many... can learn mm -hmm. from everyone. You know, for years, we're doing Pampered Chef. We always, we have our team meetings and, you know, you talk to your upline and others. But just recently, I started thinking there are other direct sellers that I can talk to that are in... A, a, to support each other. Exactly. Yeah. And to find out we can share so many things. But even though we don't do the exact same thing, mm -hmm. we have this one thing in common. And I'm quite certain that something may be working for you that I can use. Mm -hmm. Something works for me that you can use. And it's just about bringing that together, yeah, especially absolutely. with women. I yeah, think we're it's all fantastic. each other's teachers. Right, exactly. I love that idea. We've been trying to talk about that for a while with my friends, and we just never get a chance to do it. I know. I really need to, um, to 
to put something together because I, you know, I'm involved with you, Pampered Chef, Young Living, um, Juice Plus. We have, you know, this going on today, and there's just, and more. I mean, you know, Dr. Jerry Lynn Sullivan, who yeah. educates um, people, you know, all over Nashville. She goes to, like, the fire stations and educates the, the men on, you know, their um, cleansing program and their nutrition and whatever else that she offers and stuff like that. She's very educational. Mm -hmm. So she's going around being a very busy woman, you know, helping people. And there's just so much knowledge. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm learning about. There's just so much. Every Everybody has something, Absolutely. like you said, to bring to the table, yep. to learn, to, you know, something about Pamper Chef might really intrigue, you know, somebody from the Young Living Company or vice versa or whatever, you know. Well, and you're helping people in their homes. A lot of times I think people look at Pamper Chef if they don't realize and they think it's just about pots and pans. But I always say my job is it's so much more than that. You know, when someone can't Bringing afford. Bringing together, too. Right. When they can't afford to buy a particular item, if they can get their friends together and everyone can come in the same room and have a great time. Everyone is, I'm so busy, I'm so busy, I'm so busy. You've got to take time for yourself, for your family, and for your friends. Mm -hmm. And just have a moment. You know, a party, I always say, it doesn't take five days. You know, it's a couple of hours. We sit down, we eat, we cook, you know, we talk about the day and what's going on. And I have, I have so many hosts who at first are like, I don't know, I don't know. And at the end, thank you so much yeah, for having so me happy. do this. Because what are we going to remember? We're going to remember our time together. Right. And, and that's what it's all times. about. Yeah, it's bringing people together. When you look back and you think about a memory, you know, especially with me because it's cooking, people always, oh, when I was little, I was in the kitchen with my grandmother. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember cooking with my mom. They always go back to that. Well, that's what we're doing and what we're trying to create and to just make that happen for people. Did you say your grandmother? Yes. It's so funny you bring that up because <laughs> we all have children, right? So <laughs> me being the mother of three daughters, it was always hectic and crazy. They're so close in age. They're 20, 21, and 23. Oh, my goodness. So it was always crazy and hectic <laughs> with everything all the time. So, you know, now that they're older, my daughter that has a three-and-a-half-year-old and another one on the way, She's always like, Mom, you have to give me this recipe. You have to give me that. They didn't really grow up hands-on in the kitchen with me, but my three-and-a-half-year-old granddaughter, well, that's another story. <laughs> that's fun. I don't know if I said this last week on the show, but so we're baking buddies. So we're gonna, I did mention about getting the baking, mm -hmm. the kid baking kit and stuff like that. But she had made some uh, candy apples with my daughter. And literally she goes, Mimi, we baked without you. <laughs> she was so serious. <laughs> Is that allowed? I know. I'm like, well, why did you bake without me? Oh, because we did. <laughs> Just so simple. Yeah. It is what it is. But memories of, you know, my grandchildren going to remember baking and cooking with me, and that's kind of something that I'm trying to do every week with her that's going to be, you know, a memory for her. So, yeah. I found my, a rolling pin when I got married. My grandmother gave me a rolling pin. And I found that in my cupboard, and so I took it out, and I put it in a place of honor in the kitchen where I see it every day now. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So, I yeah. did the same thing with my mother-in-law. Oh, that's When neat. she passed, and, you know, we were trying to go through, you know, what people wanted. I, you know, we were in the kitchen, and someone had opened the drawer, and I said, can I just have the rolling pin? <laughs> it's about this big, and wow. I have it right in the kitchen on a wall, and I see her yeah. every day. it makes you think of them. And it really and you does. You know they're with you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly funny is that yeah. the rolling pin yeah. <laughs> and I don't even bake pies <laughs> we used to make sugar cookies she used to we used to do the Christmas cookies and decorate them together ah, so very nice yeah. yeah in our house when I grew up <laughs> you were not allowed to be in the kitchen yeah it was more of I've got things to do you're going to get in yep. the way mm -hmm. go sit over there I'll call you in when it's time to eat and unfortunately I kind of did that with my daughter but my husband was really good at bringing her in the kitchen. And as she got older and I became more patient, then I was able to have her. And she, she can cook herself off right now. Yeah, <laughs> She's pretty fun. good. It's yeah. fun to watch them grow up. It really is. So I'm looking forward to, in many years, when I am a grandmother, <laughs> that I will yeah, then have the patience. Yeah, they're doing Thanksgiving or the holidays. Exactly. And yeah. I'll have my grands in the mm -hmm. kitchen with me. Oh, they will definitely be in the kitchen with oh, me yeah. for sure. It's, well, our <laughs> patients are different. I mean, once you get to that point where you, you raise your, your own children and the stress, you know, that you raise your kids in and then you actually have your grandchildren, it's like there is no stress involved. You worry <laughs> about them. Don't get me wrong. Right. Um, but 
it's it's like the level of fun and mm -hmm. excitement, you know. It's all like the I don't pressure's even, gone. What daughter Megan? I don't have a daughter Megan. <laughs> it's all about my granddaughter now, you know. It's, it's like, nice to live close by. by. And I go right to my granddaughter. Oh my Hi. gosh. <laughs> I remember when my daughter was born, I would hear people say that all the time. No one pays me any attention. And so I would always say, if you do not talk to me first, you will not get to her. Do you mm -hmm. understand? Address <laughs> me, ask how I'm doing, and then you can see the baby. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, it's too funny because on that note, my daughter wants everybody because she's having another baby in January, another girl. So she likes everybody has to greet Briella first before you greet the baby. So yeah, she absolutely. Feel That's hard left out, yeah, you know? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to program that. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky you get to be part of their growing up. I know. I know. My daughter's off in Arizona now. She's 20 in school. Yeah. So we'll see if she comes back. Hopefully yeah. she does. I think she will. Yeah. You never know. What is she going to school for? Um, hospitality, but she might switch to sports mm -hmm. management kind of stuff. Yeah. So we'll yeah. see. You never know where they're gonna end up. I mean, my kids are local and, but, I want, you know, whatever destination they strive for, I mean, I'm all I for it. I just want it. her to be happy. Yeah. I yeah. mean, live your life while you can. Because mm -hmm. once you start having, you know, start getting married and having the kids, it's like. And it's it, fun to experience a different part of the country. Mm -hmm. I don't care where my daughter ends, because wherever she's at, I'll be. <laughs> I said, if you don't come back, I've already told my husband, moving where she's at. <laughs> they need pamper chef all over the country. Absolutely. I can pick up my business and go anywhere I want to go. Oh, she's like, those? oh. Can you imagine starting over? That would be hard. All the people you know? No, because I can still, I'll still be here. I just won't be here. You know, we can, I mean, with Facebook I and know. all social media. Cool. I'm not worried about that. Cool. But I told her, I said, you won't get rid of me that quick. I promise you. Yeah. Wherever you're at, that's where I'm going to be. That group that I do the program with, we talk every day. We're on this chat group together. Right. And on Facebook together, and so it's fun. Yeah, that's even a, though you I don't see each other every day, we talk. Right. That's the life of the internet world now. And with Facebook, I mean, you almost feel like you. I, I've so, you know I've seen you every day, and I've seen you for real in a year. And I'll see you I go. Know. Oh, I just saw you the other day. <laughs> well, you like, know what they've been up to. You've right. seen their pictures, and yeah. And now the live stuff now they have on Facebook, which I haven't tried. Oh, yet. we have got to get you on live. I love oh, yeah. live. I, some of my friends are doing that. <laughs> I know. I'm like, well. Oh, this, that'd be great for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we should all, you know, utilize what we can, but sometimes I feel like I'm overdoing it. But this is going to wrap it up for our show today. This was fun. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. So fast. It always goes by so quickly. We'll have to have you on again, talk about your Asia trip. Yeah, so. that'd be fun. All right. I'd love to. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>